A very good morning to all my dear friends. I am Prashant Mavani. I hope you are learning good today. Is 13th October 2020. Day is Tuesday. I would like to start today's discussion with this quote: "Try to be like the turtle, at ease in your own shell. It doesn't matter. You are not slow. You are not fast. You are not him. You are not her. You are not that. You know, you are unique. No one in this world is like you." right whatever you know wherever you are be happy this is the most important thing if you don't feel that you are enough right then if you have everything if you receive rank 1 as well in civil services examination if you don't feel that you are enough you will not enjoy that moment for all the world yes you will have cameras and everything but inside you will know that i still lack that thing the reason is because the world will always compare you with someone else but don't do that mistake don't compare yourself right try to be like the turtle at ease in your own shell whatever you are however you look whatever your skin color is right if you have money if you don't have it it doesn't matter just enjoy life nothing is permanent you never know when our time will get over so why to compare ourselves with someone else with this dear friends Study IQ team has designed a smart course. So this smart course is for civil services examination. It covers your prelims as well as mains examination until 16th October 2020. EMI offer is also available. To download the PDF of today's lecture, check out my Telegram channel and please make sure that you share this lecture on uh, various different social networking sites. Uh, talk about this lecture with uh, those students who are not aware about this version. and uh, hit the like button if you have learned something genuinely if you believe that you have learned something from today's discussion hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel on our table we have four important articles to go through let's quickly go through them the first one is about gene editing now regular students you know that we have talked about this gene editing thing few days ago we talked about its utility we talked about the chinese scientist who did experiment uh, on this uh, gene editing thing So the Nobel Prize in Chemistry for 2020 has been awarded to two ladies and this is a very unique thing this is for the first time in the history of Nobel Prize that we find that all ladies team has received a Nobel Prize in chemistry and uh, two ladies got it two women scientists uh, received or they were awarded this uh, Nobel Prize and I would like to add one more thing that uh, Alfred Nobel in his will has said that uh, you can gave this uh, nobel prize or any nobel prize to maximum 3 people in a group max 3 people can okay, be given this nobel prize not more than that okay so keep this thing in mind this is very important now i want you guys to understand like see i believe most of you are regular now so i don't have to repeat the things that we have already discussed a few just a few days ago on your screen you can see this i'm i'm sure you know this is how it looks like and uh, this is just a picture this is not a real picture but it's just for our understanding that you can edit uh, your gene you know you can you can make changes with it uh, so this is like a gene editing tool the full name is c r i s p r c a s 9 this is a gene editing tool for which uh, this uh, two scientists have received 2020 Nobel Prize in Chemistry. The full form is on your screen. You are good with English, guys, so I don't want to read it out loud for you. Uh, anyway, in case if someone someone is not able to read visually impaired, so let me read it out. The clustered regularly interspaced short palindromic repeats. That is C R I S P R, and C A S nine stands for C I R S P R. associated protein 9 together this is gene editing tool some 8 years ago it was discovered and uh, we are when i say we i'm talking about human beings are already using it in biology medicine and in the field of agriculture i have this question for you on your screen pcr that stands for polymerase chain reaction was invented by whom in which year this is a question for you today stick your answer do a little bit of research on this thing and stick your answer in the comment section now on this page you can see 1 2 3 4 5 six important points i'm going to be very quick here because uh, there are other things that we need to discuss but the argument is that 
the first question right the first thing that i want to tell you guys or share with you guys is is nobel prize a perfect system the answer is no is oscar a perfect system the answer is no there's nothing that we can call perfect we try to bring things as near to perfect as possible right uh, judges or jury members or committee members uh, they have experience and they are trained uh, to see things impartially right there are proper it's a, it's like a science and art uh, so if you work on that skill then you can uh, become that uh, you can you can achieve or you can see a significant difference in your judgment and decision taking sometimes what happens is uh, you like something but uh, that's your personal choice right if you if you like something that's your personal choice but when it comes to when you are part of a committee then you cannot just as uh, say yes or vote for that thing just for uh, just based on this thing because that you like it right you have to you have to evaluate from scientific and other point of view as well when you are part of a committee in your personal life you can say i like a movie or i don't like it but if you are part of part of jury as uh, you know in oscar then then you, there are some standards that you need to follow so nobel as well is not a perfect uh, system in my opinion uh, whatever i know i can based on that thing i'm sharing this thing you may have your own opinion and i don't uh, i'm not saying that you are wrong uh, yes right uh, that could be your point of view uh, go through some evidence and research that is available out there and here is again one example that the discovery of uh, cri spr can be traced back to 1987 this was when group of japanese researchers observed an unusual homologous DNA sequence uh, bearing direct repeats with uh, spacing in a EU bacterial gene. Several important discoveries uh, followed after this thing, and we find uh, that uh, CRI SPR was uh, discovered, and uh, it uh, showed it uh, and showed it to be a bacterial adaptive immune system and to act and act on uh, DNA targets. Uh, then one scientist from Lithuania. a biochemist uh, worked on this thing and on CRISPR and the question is that this scientist this Lithuanian scientist was part of this uh, group that got Kevli prize for nanoscience back in 2088 uh, back 2018 uh, Kevli prize uh, for uh, nanoscience in 2018 uh, was given to three individuals right they were part of this group and we find that two of them are the 2020 chemistry nobel prize winners but this third scientist his name is not in this nobel prize the nobel committee recognized this two scientists uh, charpentier and doudna as the sole discoverer discovers of programming a cas9 protein to cut a piece of dna at a specific site with the help of a small piece of rna thereby proving the ability of crispr cas9 to cut as uh, to function as a gene editing tool as far as india is concerned uh, there is a long way to go for us uh, we are still very you know in very initial stage of this technology uh, world health organization has formed a panel of gene editing experts what who is trying to achieve here is that uh, if there is some sort of research going on if you are doing anything if you are playing around with this gene editing technology then you need to provide your data you need to provide your information and everything you know it should be open and transparent and this is very important that every one of us uh, or every other country or institutions uh, they follow this thing because you never know right if someone will someone's mistake uh, will be catastrophic for the whole world i'll give you i'm not saying that coronavirus was designed in a laboratory i'm not sure about it but just imagine if it was so if you are editing if you are mixing and editing juice copy pasting this uh, genes and playing around with it then it can result into a very dangerous thing so it should be regulated right in our country we have this environment protection act in 1986 and we have this biomedical and health research regulation bill so this two bills uh, this one bill and this act is associated with this manufacturing use import export storage of hazardous microorganisms or genetically en- engineered organisms or cells uh, that's that everything is controlled by these two things 
Okay, so that's basically everything. Now let's move on to the next item, the purpose of a protest. Uh, this article has few points with which I personally don't agree, but I, again, right, dear friends, I want you guys to go through this article and decide your own opinion. There are few paragraphs or few lines uh, with which I don't disagree. Which, with, with which I disagree, right? I don't agree with uh, this few lines. Uh, okay. But anyway, the most important uh, points that you find in this article are on your screen. We are going to go through it. Uh, so this article is about uh, this uh, Shaheen Bagh, right? Uh, protests uh, in Shaheen Bagh because of this CAA and uh, this NCR, uh, NRC and uh, the latest decision of Supreme Court. Supreme Court uh, has said that you cannot have an indefinite uh, Chakka jam. You cannot uh, close streets. You cannot be on street. You cannot protest forever. That's what the Supreme Court has said. Supreme Court has also said that your protest is creating trouble for other people in uh, the city. Now, the court made the dangerous observation that the mode and the manner of dissent against colonial rule cannot be equated with dissent in a self-ruled democracy. What court has said is that uh, chakka jams and uh, coming out on street and this sort of things uh, were okay in colonial era. I'm just breaking it down for you guys. Uh, but in a self-ruled democracy, you cannot have the same way of protesting. Now, this is a very dangerous observation that is coming from Supreme Court. First of all, let us understand what is self-ruled or self-rule. As per Mahatma Gandhiji, as per his uh, uh, Swaraj idea, the real Swaraj will come not by the acquisition of authority by a few. At present, we are living in this situation. Authority is there, right? Uh, Indian people are ruling over us, right? We are, we are not ruled by British or Japanese or any other people. Our citizens are ruling us and uh, they have this authority. Very few have this authority. So this is not an ideal situation. Real Swaraj will come not by the acquisition of authority by a few, but by the acquisition of the authority uh, by the acquisition of the capacity by all to resist authority when it is abused. If, uh, let's say, DGP of your state uh, is, uh, um, you know, if, if, you are doing, if you are doing morning exercise in a park and if DGP uh, of, or, or no, any, let's say, IS officer or chief minister's son or someone else, uh, for whatever reason, you have a small accident and if he uh, starts abusing you and he, if you do the same and then you are having a fight with each other, like physical fight, slapping and fighting, what will happen next? What do you think in our country? Of course, right? Uh, they will chase you, the system will chase you and they will do so many things and they will basically, you know, do everything to crush your ego, to make you feel sorry about it and they will try to scare you and then they will make sure that uh, you have learned the lesson and uh, this is not just a lesson for you for the whole society it is a lesson that if you mess around with us then this is what you will get because of this things i'm just giving you a rough example because of this thing our society this this people they have uh, created fear f people in authority not everyone but few of them for sure and this this is not Swaraj. This is not democracy, in my opinion. Swaraj is to be attained by educating the masses to a sense of their capacity to regulate and control authority. In a democracy, we should be able to control authority. When, when they see people, they should be scared that they should be in their best behavior. Instead of that, when they see us, they are like, you know, taking out that uh, sticks that let's hit them hard isn't it so this is the real gandhiji what he said was he was very visionary that uh, he he talked about this thing and this is a real swaraj that we need and this is a swaraj for which we have to work right every one of us it doesn't matter if you are an indian then you have to work for it simple as that because this is your country this is our country the state in itself is uh, coercive and people have to be eternally alert so that they are not robbed of their sovereignty the reason why we are not able to enjoy all the rights that we see in or in our constitution is because we are sleeping. We are in a deep slumber, right? We are we are cocooned in our own life. 
We don't care about other people. We don't care about society. What we think is, my kid is getting good education. My brother is in good company. My sister is working here. This and that. You know, my, everything is with mine, mine, mine. And that's it. This is mine. He's or she is mine. And this is my house. And this is my society. And that's it. What's going on in our city? What's going on at national level? Uh, we don't come out on street or we don't say it loud on platforms and so abuse of authority is something that we are well aware in our country resistance uh, to authority or protest is thus intrinsic to citizenship so if some so if someone is abusing his or her authority then we have this right to protest now protest is not something that disturbs the society if there is disturbance in society then people will protest Protest is not for inequality. Protest is pr protest takes place when you find that equality is disturbed. Protests attempt to gain or restore equality. People protest because they feel that they have been forced into an unequal situation. Most important line in this article. Protests are protests arise simply because the governments create a crisis that too by lawful means through the passage of discriminatory laws. Protests do not disturb the balance in society. In fact, they are there or they are conducted to achieve a balance in society. So these are a few important points that I found in this article. Now the court is also right in this point and this is my personal opinion. Court has said that uh, these people who are continuously sitting at a particular place or a particular chalk, they are uh, also disturbing or they are violating the right of the people in that particular city a right to mobility I would like to add here that if you are protesting that's fine your problem is with government but you are also creating troubles for the people they are living in your area or maybe uh, in your of course in your city isn't it maybe in different area but in your city so if you want people's cooperation then you have to support them if if they are if they're going to let's say um, office hours are there peak hours you you need to you know let them go or something like that I'm what I'm all I'm saying is right if you want to carry on protest if you want to stop it it's totally on individual or a particular group but they should not, they, their problem is with the government and not with the people. So they should try to win the hearts and minds of people rather than creating things that are disturbing the people. So that's the thing. But apart from that, uh, of course, in politics, you know, uh, it's it's very uh, deep game. So, okay, anyway, I don't want to, if I, if I talk on these topics, then that will that will be like uh, you know you will feel like i'm being biased or but this happens everywhere in in some states right the bjp ruled states uh, a few ngos or few groups uh, supported by congress or opposition parties they will come out on street uh, for a few things in congress ruled states or other party ruled states uh, where bjp is not there then bjp will do like in kerala and other states so it's 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 a sort of profession in which you have to do this sort of things, you know. That's that's what they are doing, I believe. Uh, towards cleaner air in Delhi. Now, Delhi and air pollution, we know the situation, isn't it? Uh, we read things about Delhi and we know things about Delhi. So, one of the most pol uh, polluted, uh, air polluted, uh, one of the most polluted city in the world when it comes to air pollution. And uh, sadly for our country, as per WHO, top 20 polluted cities out of that uh, I think 14 or 16 are just in our country so this is uh, you know damaging our health uh, it is destroying families uh, your expenses are going up because of pollution and uh, see Diwali is not that far from us so this is the reason why we find this sort of topic now when it comes to Delhi this Vehicle pollution, then thermal power plants, uh, brick nails, stubble burning, something that uh, Delhi government has no control over. Uh, then dust coming from uh, this uh, Thar desert. 
So there are so many things, uh, transportation, em emission coming out of, from uh, vehicles. When it comes to particulate uh, 2.5, particulate matter 2.5 and uh, PM10, uh, in Delhi, it exceeds national standards and uh, the most stringent World Health Organization's limit as well. It is said that Delhi needs to reduce 65, it needs a 65% reduction to meet the national standards for PM2.5. So can you imagine how much pollution will be there? And this is again a very important information. Remember these two names, sulfur dioxide and nitrogen dioxide. Delhi's toxic air also contains high doses of sulfur dioxide and nitrogen dioxide because many times they ask you this question in India or in Delhi look at uh, the statement or you know observe the below given names or gases that you find in Indian cities uh, or polluting agents that you find in Indian cities and they'll give you carbon dioxide and nitrogen dioxide and nitrogen oxide and uh, sulfur dioxide and sulfur oxide so you should be clear about this sort of things uh, you should of course i know that you have to remember some things some things you have to buy heart but they ask you this type of question so you need to be a bit particular about it vehicles including trucks and uh, two wheelers contribute 20 to 40 percent of the pm 2.5 concentration a three-part action comprises emissions standards uh, public transport and electric vehicles so this article is uh, telling us three things, uh, three uh, steps or three suggestions. And I would like to add some more things. Uh, so first one is uh, tougher penalties, right? Uh, we need to set, uh, we need to, we need strict enforcement of emission control. PUC. You know, PUC, Pollution Under Control Certificate, right? Uh, it's like license to pollute. For 30 or 50 rupees, you can get it for your motorcycle. For 100 or 200, 300 rupees, you can get it for your car, right? Uh, no one fails. No car, no vehicle fails. Uh, it just gives you a certificate. And police personnel, what they do is they ask you for your license. Uh, if you're riding a motorcycle, are you wearing a helmet? Okay, you are. License. Here we go. A registration document. You provide them with that. Insurance paper. Clear. Pollution under control certificate, yes, you have it. If you have all these things, you can leave. That's it. But no one is checking whether this PUC, this vehicle is, how much pollution this vehicle is adding. So that's a sad part. So we, first of all, rather than enforcing it, first to repair this uh, thing, this PUC thing. Second, reducing private vehicles, good idea. The problem I believe in our country is public transportation, right? They are very basic. You need to provide luxury. Today's people, today's generation, right? They need phone charger facility. They need uh, good music or radio, right? Comfortable chairs, some creative environment inside, right? If you see the state of state transport buses, they are awful, right? They are not that, what do we say? If you, if you compare it with private uh, bus or private transportation service then you will find that or travel service you will find that they are they are from outside as well they look very attractive inside as well they are neat and clean and you know so luxury comfort this sort of things should be uh, they are today's necessity and the third one here they are suggesting electronic vehicles I would like to take it further not just cars and motorcycles cycles walking track cycling tracks in city area then not just that, uh, you know, you should have uh, with on your footpath, there should be, people should be able to skate. You know, they have skateboards and so many things we find in New York and London City. If you visit sometime, then, or if you see it on YouTube, you'll find that on, on busy areas, right, people are uh, skating to work. They are using these electronic skating boards. They are very safe to use as well. That uh, you just stand on it, and if you want to change the direction, with few in in one or two or three days time, you would be ready to go. You can you can ride it on traffic payment as well when things are a bit busy. Then as well you can carry on uh, with that. So we need to create this sort of thing. So this will make it easy. If someone has to catch a metro, then he or she will catch a metro. They can carry this skating in their hands, and uh, you know it's like a board skating board type thing. And then when you step out of, uh, when you are out of that uh, railway station, 
or metro station then if you want to travel two three four five kilometers and if bus or train if you don't want to use it you can use this footpath and you can directly reach there isn't it so something like this something new right electronic is something that we need uh, tyranny of uh, trps uh, trps uh, you know how it works i'm not I'm, I'm not sure whether you know how it works but i'm sure you have heard about it uh, like trps are very important the higher you have the better your program is but that's how they judge a program but the question is is trp system itself a perfect system or a scientific system in india no one wants to be regulated when it comes to Supreme Court, when it comes to appointment of judges, the government of India came out with this National Judicial Appointments Commission. And if you want to make some changes with judiciary, then you cannot just have a special majority in the parliament. 50% of your states, right, in a country, in our country, 50% states, legislative assembly should also give a green signal. And after that, you can go for it. So this whole process was done. NJAC constitutional amendment were done and finally NJAC was made part of constitution but Supreme Court rejected this thing. The media especially television media swears by self-regulation. Energy regulators are mostly parking places for retired civil servants. When you have done so many things about uh, for a party when you were IAS or a civil servant so when you retire what uh, the government will do is the government will give you a very good post in government and then all you have to do is enjoy all the perks and everything you know you can have a very good life after retirement so it's post retirement plan and so many civil servants are you know head of so many committees now quickly jumping on to figure about or jumping on to this thing trp about 550 million individuals tune, uh, tune into uh, the TV daily and spend roughly 3.45 hours per day watching TV. There are other figures that you will find in this article, but this is more than enough. So on an average, 550 million, so half of India is watching TV for roughly speaking four hours a day, right? So, this four hours are like, uh, you know, an opportunity for you to sell products. There are 800 channels and total revenue is 66,000 crore rupees. 40% uh, is advertisement, 60% is distribution and subscription services. If we talk about total advertising market, traditional as well as digital, then the size is 10 to $12 billion in our country. And out of this 10 to $12 billion, $2 billion is just a digital advertising advertisement and uh, TB plays a very important role in digital advertisement. Now it comes to this game of TEM and I in TEM. TEM stands for Television Audience Measurement and INTEM stands for Indian National Television Audience Measurement. Both these groups or both these agencies they used to have different figures. So let's say if you are Reliance and if you want to give a television ad then of course you will approach this television company and ask them isn't it that how many people are watching your tv tell us educate us about your peak time right how many people are if 6 p.m is your peak time then how many people are on your channel two crore five crore 50 crore 100 crore give us a figure so they will go through it and then based on it they will you know decide whether they want to give their advertisement at the peak hour or not peak or medium peak hour right uh, and based on that, uh, they charge you money for uh, that advertisement. Now, the big game is they keep this thing in just 44,000 household. And based on this 44,000 household, right, uh, uh, this, uh, let's read this line here. I have learned, the writer is saying, I have unlearned everything I learned in statistics to make sense of the fact that about 22,000 bar or meter or about 44,000 households are used to distribute Digital advertising goodies worth about 25,000 crore rupees. Can you believe this thing? I'm, I'm sure many of you don't know what I'm talking about here. It's like you place this meters in 44,000 household, right? And based on this 44,000 household, you will give your figures. You will say that this many people are watching this. What they are doing is they will visit you. They will tell you that this is one extra TV that we want to keep in your house. What we want to do is keep this channel on, don't change the channel, 
and we'll pay the bill for your electricity we'll pay we'll give you a new tv as well if you want and we'll give you this much money right so in this one household this tv will be on and one channel will be on for a very long period of time so when you have like 20 30 44000 tvs like this then you can say oh the trp of this particular channel or this particular show is very high and based on that you will fetch money from advertisement you know so this is whole this is how they do it Netflix and YouTube, they know what we like, they know what we don't like, they know how much we have watched a particular program for, they know so many things. So why can't we have the same thing over here? Why can't TV channels have something like Netflix and YouTube? In countries like UK and USA, they have this Ofcom in UK and Federal Communications Commission in US. They are a mix of both. They have government appointed officials as well as distinguished members from the corporate world but that thing works in UK and USA in our country the problem is when you put someone from a retired servant then we know why that person is there and if you bring someone from private world corporate world then as well we know why the government has appointed the person somewhere down the line you will find conflict of interest so I'm not saying this is impossible but it's difficult for sure in our country to have something like that right something independent a body that is independent and that will regulate but this is all this scam is a very dark thing that's going on and that's everything from my side thank you very much for watching this video god bless you all jay hind